like if someone says this is their favorite book, run kind of way because they will ruin your life, kidnap and hold you captive, and then eat your brains. Hey, how are you? Bitter, full of hatred, tired of everything, want to scream and cry? That's good. That's good. No, that's good. Because boy, are you in the right place. This week, this week is dedicated to the girls who are just the most unhinged, crazy, evil, either have never dated or hop from relationship to relationship and cannot hold a single one down. Female manipulator, crazy high standards, borderline deranged, eldest daughter, bitter, was bullied in high school, very intentionally superficial, absolutely undateable, worn down and scorned, basically insufferable, commitment issued, borderline femme cells. That's what this video is for today. Instead, we're gonna be reading books for those girls. It's me, me, I am those girls. Well, absolutely. This week I'm going to be reading a combination of popular cult favorites alongside with some maybe lesser known books. Probably not lesser known to everyone, just me. It's it's just me. It's just me. Uh, it took a while to curate this list, but I'm going to be reading Bunny by Mona Awad, Boy Parts by Eliza Clark, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshveg, Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado, and... The Woman in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko Imamura. And this is gonna be all on my mom's first generation iPad because I'm a material girl. And uh, we're gonna see just how much these books further the femcell agenda. This is gonna be a good one. Oh, I look terrifying. I was just gonna say, gorgeous, gorgeous girls have skin that is drier than the dinosaur bones on display at the Smithsonian. Good night. Hi. Full disclosure, it's been about two and a half weeks. Uh, I have new hair. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I just came back from New York. I was there for like a little bit under two weeks. And I don't participate in overconsumerism that often, but when I do, I cannot shut up about whatever it is that I bought. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do a haul. <laughs> this feels like feels like 2013 YouTube. It does, it does. Me being like my friends graciously got me my first diva cup. They saw my TikTok about the way I can't put in a diva cup. Can you just hello please? I have not tried it yet. It's a bigger than I thought. So I got uh, I got this pair of sunglasses from Beacon Street Vintage. It's in downtown Brooklyn. Um, they're not. It's not giving. Mm, 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 uh, it's not giving Brooklyn realness anymore. Now that I'm back home, it's just not. You know what I mean? It's not giving it. Um, these look crazy on camera. I promise they don't look that crazy in person. Wow. Why did I do why did I buy these? Why did I do this? My friends and I visited the strand I think like two times and I got this beanie My friends say that this is blue But comment what color you think this is because this is green. This is fully a green beanie, right? I mean right right. Oh my god my freaking my battery is dying. I only have two more things to show I promise I got these two moleskins this one is like a plain one just for writing. These are both unlined because I, you know, I'm I'm a grown up. I'm a grown up and I don't need my pages lined. And this one is a sketchbook. Have I sketched in years? No. Am I really, really bad at it now and almost developing a fear of even drawing the, the simplest thing because I'll be super self-critical? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this nevertheless. It's in red. I think it looks good. I have a journal that I haven't really written that much in. Um, hang on, let me see if I, I spent like hours making the cover. And it is still cool, I wrote on it quite a bit, but something about this is a lot more refined and adult to me. Oh, I found the Diva Cup. Oh my god. like a medieval torture device and last but not least i briefly briefly showed this in the new york vlog but i didn't plan to get this but this caught my eye 
and I immediately bought it. Look at this. Oh my word. Uh, it's like not as, I guess, basic or plain as like a regular bag, but it's not as flashy and it's a little bit understated, a lot more understated than a designer bag. I also need to start getting like big girl bags and not like totes and like backpacks and like Carhartt bags, you know, so I'm very excited. My knees hurt. I've been sitting on my knees for hours. Oh my god, not hours, but I'm, I gotta go. Bye. Update on Bunny by Mona Wad. I finished it this morning. Uh, it's not that long of a book, but I also just kind of wanted to get it over with. And that is because uh, it's not good. I uh, I didn't like it. Should I take that back? I still think I'm gonna say I don't like it at the end, but I think I need more time to just think about it. Uh, but Bunny's finished, on to the next, what's the, well, I don't know what, I don't know what's the next for me. period symptoms for like three days it's like a phantom period like i feel it i feel like i have it i'm just not like menstruating right now <laughs> i'm gonna read i'm gonna read let's read hey how you doing? Bitter? Sad? Scorned? Still? Of course you are. This is a way of life. I feel good, partially, because these allergies are go going through the death of me. They're actually going- I'm, I'm gonna die. But I feel good. I'm ready to discuss and to rant. I'm gonna try to not ramble so much when it comes to this portion of the video. I spent 10 minutes talking about three books in my last book video. Shut up! Conciseness. Ever heard of it? I read five books in four days to make this upload date. My mind is racing at a million miles per hour. First book, Bunny by Mona Awad. This book is weird. It's wild. Think Mean Girls meets Heather's meets Jennifer's body. This book feels like a meth-induced fever dream. It has some difficult twists at some points that can be hard to keep up with if you do not pay close attention to the story. Okay, so the story is about a grad student named Samantha who virtually gets indoctrinated by the girls in her writing cohort who call themselves Bunny, who call each other Bunny. And the closer she gets with them, the more secrets she unravels and the weirder things get. <laughs> okay it's difficult to get into the book without spoiling it but it definitely has themes of the nature of female friendships uh or fake female friendships i should say mob mentality hive mind loneliness and most importantly i think the warped realities that we produce due to unresolved trauma the protagonist samantha is very troubled she's written pretty relatably very skittish very unsure of herself and pretty much every aspect of her life a reading this reminded me of the way the thought of speaking to the popular girls when i was in middle school made me physically ill uh, and I did lie. I, I did lie. I did lie in in order to seem cooler. I lied a lot. I'm sorry that I can't explain this book much better. I, it just, I, it, it, it's something. I feel like if I say just one more word about it, I'll spoil it. There are so many plot twists. I don't know if I hate it or if I love it. Like I said, it can be really hard to keep up with. I think this book is for the girls who don't mind calling themselves losers, who don't have a lot of friends objectively lonely yeah what does it read on the fem sale scale how much does it appeal to the fem sale agenda five out of five five out of five down down okay next the woman in the purple skirt by natsuko imamura this book is a trip so the entire pov is set from the woman in the yellow cardigan who is not only watching but but stalking, stalking the woman in the purple skirt who also happens to be her neighbor. You're, you're quite literally in stalker mode. It's, it's creepy. 
it's creepy it's creepy the story calmly progresses the narrator kind of notices and fixates on the woman in the purple skirts imperfections like her hair is really dry and brittle she can't keep up job etc and she begins to shape the woman in the purple skirts life with these anonymous gifts she gives her like shampoo samples help wanted ads and eventually the woman in the purple skirt lands a job at the same place the narrator works the last 15 pages are where the book gets very weird it's getting weird it's getting weird it's getting very weird i really really do not like the ending uh, i don't think everyone's or anyone's motives really were made clear at all okay on to the femme cellification of the woman in the purple skirt i think it's a little bit hard to pinpoint the emotion felt towards the woman in the purple skirt is it jealousy is it admiration is it strife is it you know love one thing i found interesting okay was that there's several instances where the narrator describes the way that people supposedly perceive the woman in the purple skirt right wait i just realized you can see the huge piling wait what no the huge pile of clothes it... let's just move on let's move on let's Early on in the book, she describes people's responses and reactions to the woman in the purple skirt as if they're watching a celebrity. So you kind of give in to the narrator's delusions at first, and you think, oh, well, maybe she is some hotshot. Maybe she's like some figure that's loved by the neighborhood. But in reality, no one knows who the woman in the purple skirt is. They treat and they look at her just like any other person they don't even mind her really as the reader you begin to realize that the woman in the yellow cardigan is actually i guess sensationalizing the woman in the purple skirt and kind of her every single move and she's making these things up uh it's kind of like it's kind of like sad and crazy to read you're like what i think the themes of being a femme cell are very strong in this one very strong very strong specifically the i guess whirlwind of emotions that's involved in observing another woman who may be objectively more successful than you are objectively more beautiful than you are it's less as much dissecting the parts that you lack in although that is a prevalent component and more i guess becoming obsessed with the figure who has society's standards of beauty personality likability so down packed you know what i mean i don't know it kind of brought me back to middle school when i would observe the popular girls and try to figure out just what just just what made them so so beautiful and so likable and you know and so not disgusting to look at like i was um i liked the book since it was a super easy read the plot is kind of aimless but i would recommend to read it if you get the chance what does it rate on the femcell scale we're gonna give it a four out of five four out of five yeah i understand imamoto's writing style i do but i think if it ended in a way that was even just a little bit more captivating and matched one of the motifs that were mentioned earlier in the book five out of five it would have been five out of five easy next up her body and other parties by carmen maria machado okay so this is a collection of short stories that keeps the theme of fantasy dystopia uh the world's ending by the hands of a ravenous virus <coughs> oh boy uh but all these stories have one theme in common and that is the violence and or trauma that women are subjected to when it comes to their own bodies i liked this book would i read it again no would I recommend it to anyone, like my friends or anything? No. No. Uh, so, so I guess that means I didn't really like it. I kept trying to pinpoint my qualms with this book and figure out why it just wasn't connecting with me until it hit me midway. These stories, especially with frequent mentions of very explicit sex, are just very cold and very bleak and very detached. Like the first few pages of the first story, The Husband Stitch, EW! EW! Like, sorry if I don't find like the depiction of like a young girl getting her virginity taken and then like taking a shower or like a bath after and describing it as like rust came out of my body i'm sorry if i don't find that like artistic and intellectual and like just so like oh my god this this is the one this really tugged my heartstrings like okay it freaked me out i didn't like it and i was uncomfortable there i said it there there i think machado might have actually constructed these stories this way in an attempt to i guess strip that strip that label off of women to i guess really humanize them and strip that that 
that weak nurturing just accepting of all label off of them and show them as beings who are very visibly affected and weighed down by the traumas that they face i guess i was just left wanting more from these stories but in like a substance kind of way like a meat and potatoes kind of way i think assessing the themes uniquely and less on the writing i would definitely give this a 4.5 out of 5 on the fem cell scale i think this book includes themes of how society shapes the choices that we do and we do not have a uh, loss of self in a relationship the hell hold that is raising and having children ew issues with body image sexual assault this is fem cell but in like a deeply scorned deeply traumatized kind of way like almost a bad kind of way like if someone says this is their favorite book run kind of way because they will ruin your life kidnap and hold you captive and then eat your brains next book this one is boy parts by eliza clark okay so boy parts by eliza clark is about 29 year old photographer <laughs> 29 year old photographer named irena 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 i don't care irena i don't like you her work is explicit photographs of men that she scouts day to day uh she's placed on sabbatical from her bar job because spoiler alert someone punched her in the face good she's offered an exhibition at london gallery and i guess in the midst of that all she's triggered into a very familiar world of drugs alcohol and their very bad decisions she also relays um very traumatic experiences that she went through in her earlier years i i have to obliterate this character okay so in like two minutes you'll get it whatever i say later makes sense this character irena is genuinely the most unlikable person in the world she's narcissistic she's manipulative she's self-centered she's psychopathic she's a psychopath not a single redeeming quality but you know what women women can be that representation matters <laughs> it's interesting because the story isn't very plot driven but it's the character's character that simultaneously makes the makes the book so hard to get through but also makes you want to keep reading because you're like what what is she gonna get herself into this time like what what is it she was compared to patrick bateman in american psycho but i mean look at me like seriously i wouldn't even watch it as satire like i wouldn't even hate watch it no like i can indulge in a genuinely awful character but damn not only is she an anti-heroine she is the villain she is the villain she is the villain i think these allergies are making me literally I, 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 i'm just gonna read my notes i'm not even gonna act like i'm just i'm just gonna read my notes okay the way in which irena photographs and views these men is very indicative of traditional and conformative gender roles that have been pushed and explored and demanded but this time they're reversed which is a very interesting take but it's still it's still yucky because no one deserves to be treated like that right um but interesting nevertheless i guess as the reader it's very obvious to see that irena is the way she is because of the sexual abuse she's been through in her formative years i think this is a portrayal of the way that some people who have been abused previously 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 in the past become abusers themselves sex gender power the book has all that if you like that kind of stuff read it i guess i think similar to her body and other parties you're not parties okay you're not supposed to have a good time reading this i think you're meant to see that women can be awful people they can be violent they can have power and they can abuse it just like anyone else where does this lie on the fem cell scale man i'll give it a 3.5 out of 5 this is for the insufferable girl for the girl who sometimes just sometimes emanates the most nasty vibes ever um and is not always pc i will say i'm quickly learning that these self-proclaimed cool girl books sad girl books are mainly just liked and admired by white women and it's very evident to see that and to see why i won't be elaborating on that but they are like the way people just chalk up this character to being unhinged an unhinged queen it's like okay sure she's unhinged like hrh collection is simply unhinged like give me a break this is entirely my fault for not liking them uh i, don't, I just don't think these are my type of book i mean we all have insufferable arrows that can be situational or like exacerbated by mental health but like ugh, 
I don't want the media I consume to be about insufferable people. I want escapism. I want escapism. I want fun. <laughs> it's the reason why I have my three new girl comfort seasons on rotation every single day. <laughs> Keeping the theme of unlikable characters. Next book, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Artessa Mosfeg. I almost butchered that one. I did in one take though. I did. This book, I woke up at about 5.50 this morning. I read it in about five and a half hours. And when I finished it, I thought nothing. I thought of nothing, nothing at all. No thoughts were in my head. I swear, n nothing, nothing. I was like, I like I like I swiped the last page and I was like okay 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 so this book is about our unnamed protagonist she is 24 lives in New York City very wealthy very wealthy woman very wealthy very wealthy she graduated from Columbia she's good she's fine she said she's also undeniably numbed by the traumas in her life that were treated with an immense lack of affection Wait. So in order to go through some sort of metamorphosis, in order to have a new life, she calls it, in order to rid herself of her miseries and anxieties, she plans to sleep for an entire year, right? Not a year straight, like I thought, not like a coma, which is what I thought, but just to sleep, really do nothing for most of the day, but to sleep for a whole year to hibernate with the help of sleeping pills. Now, one of the reasons why I pseudo enjoyed reading this book and why I didn't find the character to be so incredibly annoying, I wanted to blow my brains out, was because I love to sleep. I love, love, love to sleep. I love to sleep. I love to sleep. I love to sleep. I love to lay down. If I am just even the little bit like like the least bit tired or have the just like the least bit amount of time i will lay down and sleep and regenerate i love 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 to sleep i'm a girl who loves to sleep i love to sleep hang on let me just read you a pass okay dramatic let me just read you a passage from this book sleep felt productive something was getting sorted out i knew in my heart this was perhaps the only thing my heart knew back then that when i slept enough i'd be okay i'd be renewed reborn I'd be a whole new person. Every one of my cells regenerated enough time that the old cells were just distant, foggy memories. My past life would be but a dream, and I could start over without regrets, bolstered by the bliss and serenity that I would have accumulated in my year of rest and relaxation. I mean, it's like, seriously, go on, like, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Like, the writing is... Ugh. When I read this passage, I was like, ah. I know that one. I don't have much to say about the book itself. The middle sort of drags out to where you kind of feel like you're being lethargically led on, like a daily account of a wealthy woman falling in and out of sleep, complaining about everything in her life, and then like taking like a handful of different pills. What? Hand? Hand? Okay. Oh my God. A handful of different pills each and every day. Like I said before, I loved the writing style of this. I kind of loved how much of an asshole she was, how, how numb she was to everything. And that's only because I think that is an accurate depiction of depression, how monotonous it is, how lethargic everything feels, etc, etc. I think this book does answer the ever so coveted question of what would happen if I just isolate myself for, for, a year you know or even six months or three months that ever so familiar feeling of i just i just need to think i just need to sleep i just need to write i need something something that'll promote change promote regeneration so i can feel so i can feel renewed and and finally land that job in my dreams and finally break up with that partner and finally practice self-love and finally make that move to that big city and and finally make it you know get acceptance at school or finally put that grief behind me finally feel like a brand new person just just anything um and i think that's a feeling that that almost everyone is familiar with this is the book for the girl who alienates herself who puts her friends through worrying about her isolation this book is for the girl who at times is so engrossed in herself and her pity and her suffering and her despair and her depression and at some times is the worst person in the world that being said you know i have to say it you know i have to say it because i'm a negative person at heart i am at times this book felt incredibly vapid i understand all of the criticisms although money is not the key to happiness and the mental health struggles of the wealthy are not to be invalidated <laughs> please give me a break seriously if you meet anyone and they tell you this is their favorite book that is a red flag 
that is a red flag. There is something wrong with them wholeheartedly. Yeah. Okay, that was it. I've been speaking for so long now. <laughs> I feel fulfilled and represented by these stories of miserable, friendless, awful women. I am a woman who suffers and cries and cries and cries and screams and feels victimized and writes it in her journal and often feels so debilitated she will rot in her bed for hours on end. I am not a strong black woman. I'm not a strong woman. I barely feel like a woman. I am not God's strongest soldier. I am just a vessel who, who, who wears her sins and sufferings on her shoulders. Period. Uh, yeah, that was it. What book should I read for part two? Comment down below for me. Just let me know. We can talk about it. Please. Please. Bye.